house with all your daughters, right? You have to teach your daughters how to love their husband. No. But if you don't have one, when will they ever see a woman loving a husband correctly like the Bible says? All girls, all girls. So when you are teaching, because the scripture just said the age woman, you're the age woman in your house with all your daughters, right? You have to teach your daughters how to love their husband. No. But if you don't have one, when will they ever see a woman loving a husband correctly like the Bible says? You understand? That's why we got those generational welfare babies. Right. Because those children never saw a mother and father come together in the unity of what the Bible talks about. So now we got three, four, five generations of women saying, I don't need no man. But they stay in the same Section 8 neighborhood that their grandparents stayed in. We got to look at the Bible as instruction to fix our problems. Get Isaiah 3 and 12 and then I'm going to let you come back up. Because we got to understand that the Bible is going to fix our problems. Why? When we look at welfare, with all these programs that are put out, who's the face of Section 8? Who's the face of Section 8? Black women, black children. Who are they borrowing from the household? The black man. The Bible just gave the clue. Now watch why the white man set it up for the black woman to rule in that type of environment. Watch this. Read. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Oh. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Now, what's your name, sis? I know you're on the phone, but I need you to listen to this because this is your day to fix the problem for our people. You understand? We got to realize how important we are. Is it good? This is, we got to understand how important we are as individuals and how much more importance we can bring to fixing our community when we gather together under the banner of the Bible. You understand? So God says what? As for my people, we are God's people. Point blank, period. But many other nations have set much propaganda propaganda against our people to destroy us and our value. Read on. Children are the oppressors. So when the Bible says children are the oppressors of the Israelites, how do we recognize that in game? We got the blood, the crypts, Latin kings, Nieta, all MS-13, FS-13. Those are the types of oppressors that are from the midst of our people. But what type of environment do those children, those men, those women grow up in? Read. And women rule over them. You know what that means? Single parent household. That's right. right. Nowadays, you got the woman becoming the face of gangster rap now. Right. Why is that? They come out of single parent household. Some of them come from households with no parents. Right. They come out of foster care or uh, what are orphanages. Because what has happened is no righteous marriage has happened. No righteous unity is going on. They're only finding more and more oppression to live by. So how do we fix that? By going back to the word of God. Read on. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. You need a husband so that you can be taught correctly according to the Bible. Because watch this. Have you ever made a bad decision for your household? Never? All right, watch this. I'm going to show you a bad decision. You, rock, you ready to rock? What's your name again? Justine? Jessica. Jessica. Get Deuteronomy 22 and 5. You are the example that your daughters follow, right? Whatever you do is golden to them. They're going to follow what you do, right? So let's look at how they dress. Are you a princess? Do you teach your daughters to be princesses? To act like princesses, think like princesses. So how does a princess dress? Okay. So watch this. God calls our nation a king, a nation of kings and priests. So what does that make the women? Makes them princesses, right? Let's stop, let's see how God wants you to dress. This is a decision we got to make, right? Because it shows the spirit we have. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment Go ahead. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God So watch this What article of clothing is different for men and women? What, what article of clothing should men wear? What kind of article of clothing do we got on? 
pants. It says that the woman should what? Shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Why? Why do you think God said that? I'm gonna ask you that question just to see where your head is at. Why do you think God said women should not wear pants? No. Because they're princesses. How does a princess dress? A dress? A dress. That's that right. is correct. When your daughter is going to a bathroom, they would know not to go into the men's restroom because of there being a what on the picture? A, a dress. That woman has a dress on. Right. So we got to make the right decision. So you say you never made a bad decision. Right there, God says that you did. And when you advocate for that bad decision, your children learn from your decision making. You understand that? So you see how you got to fix that? These are the things that teach us how to love one another properly. That's right. And you got to learn how to love your children. And guess what? You have to get your mind right so that you can be fit for a husband. Right. You understand that? That like that? That's the biggest thing that black women need to organize in their mind. Not, not saying anything wrong with going to college, getting an education. Nothing's wrong with that. But what makes uh, 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 the difference between a regular black woman and a noble black woman is having a husband. You want to know why? Because that should be your real desire according to the Bible. That's right. You understand? Because get that uh, Hebrews 13 and 4. I'll let you come back up. I got a deal real quick. Got a deal real quick. Hebrews 13 and 4. This is what we miss. Those single parent households is because they don't cherish or give value to marriage. Read. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Yes. Marriage is honorable. God says marriage is honorable. You're created for some man. You understand? You were created to be his help me. You were created to be his desire. But what happens is, if you don't have that mindset, it's easy to become a baby mama, right? right. Oh. And then you allow men to take advantage of you. We don't want that to continue happening to you. We don't want your daughters to continue seeing that. Do you see the solution that we're bringing forward to you? Does it, is it starting to make sense? Right. So read on. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. Uh -huh. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So help me out, Jessica. How do whoremongers and adulterers get judged? How do they get judged? Do you know? If a man is running all throughout the projects and having sex with all the women, typically what happens to that man? And some of the women that's laying with him, what happens? Huh? Okay. All right. What else can happen? I want you to think. I'm, 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 I'm gonna make it graphic. You have this one man having raw, unprotected sex with all kinds of women in the neighborhood. What can happen to them? Pregnant. Pregnant. What else? STDs. STDs. What no. else? Sometimes. Negroes get killed because of stuff like that because right, they're bro. committing adultery. You're sleeping with somebody else's baby mama. That's You're right. Sleeping with somebody else's wife. But how do we fix all of that nastiness and foolishness happening in our communities? God says, get married, black That's man. That's right. Black man, marry the black woman. Hispanic man, marry the Hispanic woman. Matter of fact, black man, you can marry the Hispanic woman. Black man, you can marry the Native American woman. Oh. That's honorable unto God. That's right. But now watch this. The black woman should not want to be marrying the white man. Right. The black woman should not be wanting to marry the Arab man or the right. Chinese man because right. that's against God's laws. That's you right. That. But you know, let's get that in total. I'm going to show you what type of marriage is honorable to God. Bring it out. Because we got to understand that when God set up order, he set it up a certain way that we would thrive. So you gotta teach this to your daughters as well. Matter of fact, back in the day, uh, our parents used to say, if she, if they say this to the men, if she can't use my comb, don't bring her home. You know what I'm saying? What were, they, what were they quoting? They were quoting the Bible. That's Did right. you realize that the black man should never marry the white woman? Did you realize that? Did you realize that the black woman should never marry an Arab man? Good. But a lot of that confusion is going on here in America because America is a melting pot. That's this right. same melting pot is where the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans were made slaves. That's right. So we've learned doctrines that are not according to God. 
So we're going to clarify interracial marriage using the Bible. Read that. Yo, the book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 12. Go ahead. Beware of all whoredom. So God calls interracial marriage whoredom. It will fall under thou shalt not commit adultery. Yes, Read on. My, my son and children, for the seed of thy father, take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. For the women, take a husband of the seed of your fathers. Now, what is the seed of your fathers? We are the children of Israel. Yes, there right. are 12 tribes, which are now known as the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. If we marry within that family, we're doing honorably. But if we marry outside of our race, outside of the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are committing whoredom. That's why. Because those nations have wicked plots. Those nations have counsels against our people. And if we marry into them, we actually show how much we are in consent with the destruction of our people. Right. You understand that? Your daughter's got to understand that. Keep reading. For we are the children of the prophets. We, the, we come from a lineage of the prophets. The prophets are of our people. Wouldn't you want to be the wife of the prophet? Prophets are going to be remembered throughout history. That's what we're reading right now. We're reading the writings of the prophets that the Lord gave unto them. That's right. You understand that? By being a part of this nation, do you know your father? You know your father? He's been in prison since I Okay. But I know him. I've seen him in prison. So understand this. You as a daughter could encourage your father, hey, father, I would like to see you get your life in order because at the end of the day, the Bible says you are a son of the prophets. That makes you a daughter of the prophets. We just got to get our minds right. You see that? So the Bible is showing us and instructing us how to order our minds right that we can fix things that we see on a day-by-day -day basis. That's right. And it goes down to marriage, how we dress, how we think, how we love one another, how we teach our children. All these things we got to clean up in our community in order for us to thrive, in order for, in order for us to live at the top of society as opposed to at the bottom. We gotta follow God's directions. Right. Read on. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So these are our forefathers. When you open up the Bible, all of these forefathers are black men. That's right. And don't let nobody tell you that these are not black men. Oh, Matter right. of fact, we can go in and prove it. Let's get Moses for an example. Get Moses in Exodus 2. We're going to show you how we know that Moses is a black man. They don't teach this in Sunday school. Right. They don't teach this at Columbia High School, Eau Claire. Yeah. Why? Because those are agencies set up by white supremacy to destroy our mindset. That's right. right. You understand that? This is the textbook we need to go back to. Read that. Exodus chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. He sought to slay Moses. Remember, Moses was considered to be the grandson of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the king of Egypt. Egypt That's is black right. people, right? How could a white son or a white boy be considered the son of a black man? That's right. You know? But understand this. The nation of Israel and the nation of Egypt are two totally different people. Right. right. Even though they share skin tone. Right. So watch this. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. So Moses helped these seven daughters water their flocks. Read on. And when they came to where you were, their father, uh -huh. he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? Uh -huh. And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Do you hear how they describe Moses? Bring it out. They describe Moses as an Egyptian. So how the hell do we make Moses out to be a white man when another nation said that Moses got he got him confused for an Egyptian? So what color is Moses in the Bible? He is a black man. That's right. They need to make sure that our children understand that. Because when we go to Sunday school in these churches, how do we color the figures in the book? We color them like white people. Why? Because there are white images in the church 
to destroy our mentality of black greatness that's found in the Bible. Right. So that's why a lot of our people are, just, are, are, are pulled away from the Bible, because what we have been taught is lies. Right. Right. But what we're showing unto you is you, your history, your family is what the Bible is talking about. Right. Right. Let's get uh, Job 30 and 30. Let's, uh, let's deal with that point some more. Color is in the Bible. Right. See how we got to clean up all that stuff? Your daughter's got to realize that their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is a black man. That's, That's right. right. And that should, watch this. Wouldn't that make them want to get married to a black man? It would. It would. Most of what black women nowadays got the white man in their head. That's why they think it's good to marry them. That's right. So let's find out what another prophet said about his uh, skin tone is. Read. Job chapter 30, verse 30. Go ahead. My skin is black upon me. He said my skin is what? Black upon me. Read on. And my bones are burned with heat. Get Revelation 114. Yo. This Yo. is what I want you to teach your daughters today. Right, Jessica? You with me? I want you to remember this one. You got to type this in your phone. Type this in your phone, Justin. I need you to get interactive. Because you got a lot to teach your three daughters. How old are they? Six, two, and nine months. Six, two, and nine months. That six-year-old, that two-year-old are very impressionable. Understand that. Whatever they see, they may even ask, do they ask a lot of questions to you? Because they're impressionable. And they want to know what you think about it. Why do they ask you what? Because they, they're looking up. for acceptance. Right. You are their caregiver. You feed them. You deal with them on a regular basis. Right. So they want to know what you think so that they can find what's good and acceptable. But if you're not allow, aligned with God, you're going to teach them lies. You understand that? Yo. So teaching them who Christ is, is a major thing. That's right. Learning what Christ looks like will teach them how to love themselves. Right. You understand that? You want your daughters to love themselves, right? That is, the, that is the solution. So let's see how the Bible describes Christ. Write this down. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Type that because when you go home and you look that scripture up, I want you to teach that what I'm about to teach you, you teach your daughters. That's today. Right, right. You understand? So this is describing Christ. Revelation 1 14. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, how is that going to convert to them loving themselves? Christ didn't have the type of hair that you gotta go buy at uh, a Korean store. That's right. Christ. His hair and the texture of his hair is what naturally grows out of our head. Right. No. That will teach your daughters how to love themselves. You understand that? So, white in color, woolly in texture. So when they have that afro out, they got the little puff balls or whatnot, you know, you do their hair, you grease it up real good. You don't do their hair? Come on now, you gotta I get with it. Hair. You can't do hair? You gotta learn. Because when you learn how to cherish their hair, they will learn how to cherish their own hair. That's you understand right. that? So you, you you see how back in the day, they are the oldest woman or the oldest child, girl child. They always call her sister. She she was the one who was braiding everybody hair, right? I know. As a matter of fact, all Sunday long, that sister was sitting on the front porch braiding all the girls' hair. And those, uh, maybe they was the only girl in the family. She would braid the, she braided the whole neighborhood hair, right? But what type of hair was she braiding? That nice woolly hair. That's right. And the Bible talks about woolly hair being on our Lord and Savior's head. That's right. That should teach us how to love ourselves. You understand that? Read on. What else is the is our Lord and Savior described as? Read on. That's what is snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he drank wine in moderation. We read about that in, in uh, uh Titus 2, where the woman should not be drunker, right? It's okay to drink wine, but not to where you pissy drunk. You right. got to get your stomach pumped. You, yeah. you, you the girl, you the drunk girl in the corner of a club. Everybody running the train on you in the club. Yeah. That's how these illegitimate bastard children get to be in our neighborhood. Yeah. Crack babies, all right. kind of craziness because our women are not living by sobriety. Right. You right. understand that? Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. Feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brass. B-R-A-S-S. -S. Walk with me, walk with me, walk with me. 
Is this the color of brass? Well, we would call that a rosy peach pink, wouldn't we? But look at your skin. Ah, brass. That's like a brassy color. Look at your skin. That's brass. And the Bible says, what kind of brass is it? What, what adjective does it give that, that skin tone? Read, it says, as unto? As if I'm in his feet, like unto fine brass. Fine brass. Right. Fine brass. Watch this. Come if on. a man ever said, hey, that's just right, they fine. What does that mean? What does that mean? You ain't never heard that before? What does it mean then? Fine brass. What does that mean? Not sure? It means it's beautiful. Right. So our skin tone is the most beautiful skin tone on the face of the earth. That's if right. it wasn't, why do these peachy, rosy people try to go get tanning agents, go get tans, Wait, try to go get, the, the, you know, they try to look like us. That's right. But they're the same people who oppress us because of our skin tone. Right. Ain't that ironic? And then some of our own men, women, and children try to look like them by bleaching their skin. That's right. right. God says our skin tone, our complexion is fine. It's beautiful. The way he created it is the way he wanted it. Right. That's why he chose us as his people. You understand that? Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. Watch this. We used to pick up like dark skinned people back in the day. You got a, dark, a, a daughter that's real dark skinned? All of them Brown skin. Light, they look almost white. Okay. So, watch this. Now, they are still the children of Israel. Right. Did you, now, let me ask this question I got to ask. Right. Did you lay with any white men? All right, all black men. Okay, good. They are the children of Israel. All That's praise. Right. That's so, whatever right. skin tone the Lord ordained for them to have, it is beautiful. That's Whether right. it's light or dark. But a lot of times within our community, we've been taught that the lighter you are, the better you are, the more special you are. But unto who? You mean to tell me that God says that dark skin is fine, but I got to look like the white man that's oppressing me throughout ages? You mean to tell me that? That's why a lot of our people have disbelief in what the Bible says. Because they think it's all about skin tone. We're right. dealing with a bloodline. That's right. You understand that? Read it again. And his feet like unto fine brass. Fine brass, our Lord and Savior is described with brown skin. But then it goes into the complexion. Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. So Jesus Christ was not a light-skinned uh, black man. He was not a medium-toned black man. He was a dark-skinned black man. That's, That's right. what the Bible says. But if we give over to lies, We'll allow Joel Osteen, yeah. Preflo Dollar, T.D. Right. Jakes, whoever's right. over Brooklyn Baptist Church and whoever's over these churches here in Columbia, South Carolina, they will say color doesn't matter. Well, why did God put color in the Bible for us to be able to recognize our Lord and Savior? Hey, come on. They don't want our children to grow up with common sense. That's right. This world is meant to live by confusion. What is that, Isaiah 24 and 10? How this world is about confusion. Give me a script on dealing with confusion. Matter of fact, give me Isaiah 5 and 20. This is yeah. how that confusion is. Then you can give me wisdom of Solomon 5 and 7. You get out. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Go ahead. Woo! Unto them that call evil good Go ahead, and boy. good evil. Uh -huh. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. So, can you see in darkness? So, what do our people expect to see? If we live in darkness, if our minds are completely clouded up with nothing, do we want our children to be grow up in darkness? No. We want them to be able to choose right from wrong. You said 24 and what? 10. 24 and 10. I said it right. All praise. Because what happens is the way that we live, the way come in, come over here. I want to show you something real quick. Just real quick. Two minutes. Huh? You good? So watch this. We're gonna show you. Listen, read. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 10. Go ahead. The city of confusion. So America is a city of confusion. Right. I think my brother said, Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Is that what he said? Yes. When has Islam ever been the black man's religion? Yes. 
Help me understand when has Islam ever been the black man's religion? The same way we learn Christianity by slavery, which is all lies. Look at the sign. Islam is an Arab religion. Guess what they did to us? An Arab slave master. The same way we learn Christianity is the same way we learn Islam, through slavery. Islam basically said, we know that the Jews are superior to us, but because we gotta be above them, they either get down or lay down. You understand that? So when my brother says, assalamu alaikum, guess what the Bible says? We've learned that doctrine of foolishness where? In the city of confusion, That's here right. in America. That's because true. if we ask them where are the prophecies that prove who we are, going on slave ships, being oppressed, he won't be able to tell me that. Read right. it again. The city of confusion uh -huh. is broken down. The city of confusion is broken down. So America is going to be destroyed, along with its lies, along with its propaganda, along with its stronghold on our people. America is going to be broken down. Finish that off. Every house is shut up uh -huh. that no man may come in that no man make America is going to be destroyed but we got to come out of the confusion wisdom of Solomon 5 and 7 I need that I want you to hear this because what happens is the more we give into America's confusion matter of fact I'm going to ask you this quick question this, had, I, this scripture had me meditating on it during this week what how do you describe a woman what is a woman what is a woman Get out. What is the one? If you can answer that question. But this, this thing have you. This scripture right here. Let's read the scripture. Why are you thinking on that? Read the scripture. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 7. Go ahead. Now we wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness. So, here in America, in the land of confusion, we, it's like a rat race. We do the same things over and over. We get tired of doing it, then we go right back to doing it. We have wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness. Wearing pants, we learned that's wickedness. Uh, not having honorable marriage, that's the way of wickedness. But we see it happen over and over again. Now, aren't we tired? Aren't we looking for solutions? But because we're in the way of wickedness, we just keep going in the same circle over and over and over again. We don't? And destruction! Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. So watch this. You ever walked in the desert? Could you imagine walking in a desert? Is there any street signs in the desert? Is there any way to point you to the next city in the desert? So you see how much confusion that God is comparing the way of wickedness and destruction to like walking in a desert. You don't have no directions. So what do you get? A whole bunch of confusion. You understand that? You got it? Read on. Where the lay? No way! Go ahead. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Because we are so deep in our sin, we don't know the way of the Lord. So today, that's why we're going through the scriptures with you, that you can learn the way of the Lord. Do you? What, what scripture did you write down earlier to teach your daughters? You got that? What, which one was it? Let me see if you're taking notes. Which one? Let's see if you're still with me. Revelation 114. What are you going to teach your daughters on that scripture? Help me out, I don't want to make sure that you go home and teach them right. You understand? You got one? Okay. Teach them the, the, the image of Christ and that their beauty is the same beauty as what Christ is. You understand? Their beauty is recorded in the Bible and their Lord and Savior looks just like them. You understand? That's how important that is. You understand? But in America, do they want to teach our young black daughters how beautiful they are? No, because they give you what what they call them uh, hoochie babies. You know what I'm talking about, right? Who 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 the hoochie babies uh, belong to? Sexy red. And guess what? Sexy red is out to do: destroy your daughters. Right. Right under your hand. Sexy red is a puppet by the white man sent to the black community to destroy your daughters. You want your daughter to be a hoochie baby? You want your daughter to be uh, found to be twerking in class on another five-year-old boy, six-year-old boy. Amen. You want her to be found in the bathroom doing something Amen. nasty, right? But that's what this society is teaching to our children. Read on. Go ahead. Where we at? What you got? Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12 and 13. 
13. Go ahead. Gather people together, men and women and children. Ah. So the Bible is meant to gather our nation together. Men, women, and children. Read on. And that stranger that is within thy gates, uh -huh. that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God. And hear that? That we may hear and fear the Lord our God. You should have fear. Knowing that God says, as a princess, you don't deserve to be wearing pants. You hear what I said, right? You don't deserve, you're so special, you don't deserve to be wearing those defiled pants on your body. Press. That's right. That's how the world will know you as a princess. Right. And the world will be dared to treat you any way different. You understand right. that? Read on. And observe to do all the words of this law. Observe right. to do. You see how we're painting the picture for your mind? So that you can start beginning to uh, uh, observe how to do righteousness. You understand that? To do all the law what? And that their children, which have not known anything, uh -huh. may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. So, watch this. Damn, that's a good stuff. Read it again. And that their children, which have not known anything. Watch this. In the land of confusion, here in America, they don't want our children to have the common sense the of the Bible. Right. So our children got to be taught correctly. Everybody will always say, well, yeah, t tell that to the children. But you're the one at home with them. So if you don't know, who's going to enforce it when we're not there? Jeez. Who is God giving the responsibility to, to fix what we see in our communities? Right. God is saying, make sure that we teach our children his laws, statutes, and commandments that they may continue to do it. Jeez. Because what's happening is our children go to the mothers, the fathers, at, for acceptance. But if you're accepting sin, what are you teaching them to live by? Sin. Amen. Read it again. And that their children, which have not known anything. So our children have to be taught the word of God. They don't know anything. They're waiting for us to pour it into them. Read on. May hear. May hear, read. And learn. Uh -huh. Fear the Lord your God. So your fear of God is going to teach your children the fear of God. So what's happening is we should see that many generations in the black, Hispanic, and Native American community do not fear God. You understand? Why? Because we have walked away from God's understanding. We walk in the way of wickedness and destruction, and then we're looking for somebody else to come fix the problem. Right. We are the problem, so we can fix it. You understand? That? So, what's your name, sis? Lisa. Watch this. Help my sister, Lisa. What article? Look at Lisa. Look at this. I want you to see this. Okay? Okay. Save it. Right? So, watch this. Now that you know what God requires of you as a princess, you got to relay that message to your sister. What did God say that you should not be wearing? Pants. That's right. That's right. He said dresses. And say dresses. And now, answer to help me out. If we know these things, what, what is it within us that moves us to go backwards? What is it in us? Right? Sin is what causes us to go backwards. Get that into uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. We are born in sin. But God is showing us his commandments. We're being taught the commandments that we come out of sin. 1 Timothy 2 and 9. I understand. I understand. What bathroom are you going to go in? I know I'm just saying. Which one? The one with the dress on it. There you go. There you go. So now we're going to read a commandment. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come back. Make sure you don't buy anything when you go into the store. Today is the Lord's Sabbath. You should not be buying on the Lord's Sabbath. Oh, that's right. Understand that. What is the nation? Yeah. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.